<laughs> so I was interested in what you, what you talk to students about. Um, you talk to several, you know, and you have a very interesting job. So what do you tell them that's important? Or, and or what's important to you as you conduct your business on a regular basis? So perhaps the most important thing is, is probably captured in my, one of my values on my website, which is don't just make a living, make a difference. Um, I don't get paid much to go to Africa, but the personal impact that I feel validates what I do for a living. It makes me feel good about what I do. Mm. And you really do make a difference. It makes you feel good. So what I tell the kids more than anything else is when the time comes for you to start thinking about a career, be sure you pick something you're really going to enjoy doing because you know the money really will follow. It really will. It does for everybody. But just make sure that what you're doing is something that you can develop a degree of passion about because if you have the passion, then it ceases to be a job. I mean, it really becomes this part of who you are and that's really, really important. And tell me about what what is a, a story of a change that you have seen in Africa? You've been you work all over the world, but certainly a lot in Africa. What's what's a profound change that you've seen? Well, oddly enough, let me shift gears and not talk about telecom for a moment. I did some work with the World Health Organization where we were trying to create uh, changes in the townships that had to do with social mores, and I'm not going to discuss them in detail because they're frankly kind of horrific. But they have to do with beliefs about, about the spread of HIV and how you stop mm. it. And our goal was to educate people to the point that we could get them to understand that we can stop this thing if we change a few of the belief structures. By working with the leaders, the charismatic leaders of the villages, we were able to get them to understand by envisioning a future that involved where their kids could be as opposed to what they're restricted to today that has measurably reduced the spread of HIV in the townships. And it was simply by creating an alternate status quo. And how did you get them to buy in? A couple of ways. One, we, we literally sat them down and showed them the alternative, showed them what could possibly be. Number two, we talked money with them. We showed them what kind of revenue they could generate for each of their little individual villages and so on, which has impact because these mm -hmm. are pretty poor people. And the third thing was we went straight to the kids. We actually educated the kids. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the organizations I work with has a little bus that goes around to all the townships and it has computers on the bus. And the kids can come on. It takes them about 12 femtoseconds to become computer <laughs> literate. I mean, they're amazing. And they, they, they can do everything they want to do. Future bright for you? Very, very bright. Uh, a lot of potential out there. Um, I think it's, it's really going to be more of the, the leadership stuff because the technology's covered. You know, now it's how do we teach people to do as opposed to simply thinking about and it. work together. Steve, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Fran. Thank you.